Okay, so welcome to this brief chat on sociology as an optional. Now, when you are choosing an optional, if it is your own subject, then there is absolutely no issue. You are the best person to know how to go about it. If you have studied the subject in the college and you are totally familiar with it. But if the subject that you have chosen is a new subject, that means you have not studied it in the college, then how should you make a choice? What should be the criteria? One, that the content of the syllabus should not be too technical, that it should not require a specialized training in that field, so that even if you are let us say from engineering background or medicine or commerce or something and you can choose another option, so the option should be such that it is not too technical. Secondly, that guidance is available and the study material is also easily available so that you do not have to hunt for the study material and very importantly, you should also have a minimal interest in the subject, that reading the subject should not be like a bitter medicine that you have to forcibly swallow, because you have to stay with the subject for more than a year and it should have minimal, you should have minimal interest in the subject when you read it. So these are the, I think, the basic criteria you should keep in mind when choosing an option. Now, I will talk about sociology, that sociology does fulfill these conditions. The subject matter is not very technical, it is actually common sense made a little difficult. And you should be able to understand it at the level of common sense, then you would be able to de do well in the exam. that study material is very easily available on, in sociology. Now, what has to be your objective when you prepare for the civil services exam? Your goal should be to become a good examinee. Your goal is not to become a sociologist. What do I mean by a good examinee? That you should be able to score, let us say between 280 to 330 marks in the exam. 280 on the lower side. And 330 is on the hard side which is achievable, which is practically possible to achieve. <laughs> so that should be your target. Only then you will be placed in the merit list in a decent position and get the service of your choice. Now, what is to be done to get this, to achieve this target? to get this kind of score. See, first requirement, especially I am speaking in the context of our program, that you should be comfortable with English language. 
when i say comfortable with the english language it means one that you should be able to write grammatically correct simple english so that you can convey your ideas to the examiner you should start with the assumption that examiner is going to read your answer not the way it is sometimes said in the university the examiners look at only the length of the answer and give you marks and they don't read each and every line of your answer here the examiner would be reading your answer so you should be able to write in a grammatically correct english secondly since our program is going to be in the english medium so you should be able to understand things in english that's the bare minimal requirement you don't have to be very specially or highly talented in english i am not saying that that's why i use the word comfortable that you should feel comfortable handling english language then if you look at the type of questions that are asked in the exam quite often they are not straight questions that you simply memorize things from the study material and pour it out in the exam that will not do you will have to mold the information to fulfill the requirement of the question that every question is an special query every question raises a specific query which you have to address and you have to build a case in favor of the question i'll give you simple example to illustrate as to what i mean suppose you are fighting a case in the court of law on constitution and you simply go and tell the judge all the articles which you have memorized that will not help you win the case you to selectively use the articles which are relevant in that case and then build an argument in favor of your client same way in the exam also there is a specific quest query you have to mold that raw material sociology here is only raw material that has to be molded as per the demand of the question then only you can get 60% marks in the answer and it is not something very difficult if you have the right frame of mind your frame of mind should be to understand not simply to memorize you should try to understand the concept whatever is being talked about in the class or whatever you are reading for a topic you should really understand it without understanding you cannot handle the questions you cannot score simply memorizing sociology will not help i am telling you the very first day that we are interacting that you have to focus on understanding the subject and sociology is not a very difficult subject to understand and to make you understand is my responsibility provided you have the mindset to ask questions and understand so all throughout you should focus on understanding the subject then another very important thing to organize is to organize your ideas according to the question you have to develop that habit 
see generally people do not have the habit to mold and organize their ideas as per the question they learn the subject material and write it down in the exam give all the information i call it lord hanuman approach you are familiar with the mythology that lord hanuman was asked or sent by lord rama to get a particular herb sanjeevni now he had no knowledge of the herbs he could not figure out which one is sanjeevni so he carried the whole mountain students also carry the whole mountain they memorize the whole chapter and write down everything in the answer you don't get marks for that you get marks only when you write relevantly see if you look at the question paper the upsc clearly says don't write more than 150 words for an answer they have specified it they are not interested in just the quantity that the more you write the more marks you get that's not going to happen and therefore you have to develop this habit of selecting out relevant information from the stock of knowledge that you have mold it as per the demand of the question and present it in the answer and this habit takes time to develop you to start from the beginning you to start a practice which i call thought framework making making thought frameworks of the answer so i want you to if you choose sociology as an optional you first thing you should do is to get hold of this booklet which consists of the syllabus as well as all the previous years questions now every topic that we cover here in the class after that you would you are expected to do the basic readings which i are going to be suggested to you and then have a look at all the previous years questions on that topic and try to organize your ideas about the question how do you have to do it that i'll be telling you after some time once you become familiar with the subject once we have covered some topics say after 10 15 days of lecturing then i'll demonstrate that in the class as to how should you prepare thought frameworks but you have to cooperate voluntarily by every day taking up some questions and thinking about them one thing which is very important is always respect the question what do i mean when i say respect the question people generally do not respect the question they look at the question statement identify the topic that which part of the syllabus it is from and pour out everything that they know they are not responding to the question so you should develop that attitude where you clearly understand the meaning of the question lot of people don't care to understand meaning of the question the precise meaning the question has and they do not therefore try to mold their information as per the demand of the question so every day you will have to spend 15 minutes not more than that taking up the questions of the previous years and thinking about it how to think about it that i'll explain to you that i'll demonstrate to you later on but you have to do the practice of thinking about the question and orienting your information as per the demand of the question then you will find once you develop this habit 
that it is not very difficult to answer a question. See, as per the present pattern of examination in the optional, say, sociology, they want you to answer 19 questions in each paper. There are two compulsory questions. Each compulsory question has five parts. So that makes it 10 questions. Those 10 questions are compulsory. There is no choice. After that, there are remaining five questions in the question paper out of which you have to select any three. I think uh, not five, six questions in the question paper out of which you have to select any three. And all these three questions have three parts. In every question, there are three questions. So that makes it 19. So you will be answering 19 questions in the exam. And for those compulsory questions, they say, don't write more than 150 words. So roughly your answer should be around 150. Now to write 150 words, how many, how much information do you need? Three or four points. Elaborate each point into 40 or 50 words paragraph and your answer is done. You don't need too much of sociology. You need clarity of understanding of whatever sociology you have. And the other three questions, which I said, I first mentioned the two compulsory questions of five parts each, which are 150 word each. Then in the three other questions, there are three parts. In two parts, you have to write your answer in about 300 words. And the third part, you have to write your answer again in about 150 words. So you have to write three questions of, in all 750 words, roughly. And you cannot write more because there is a limited space in the answer sheet. So even here, when you are writing an answer of 300 words, how many points do you need? Five, six points. Elaborate each point with an example, that makes your answer complete. So it is not a very difficult proposition provided you have understood things correctly. So if you are genuinely interested in scoring around 300, then this practice you will have to develop. I will help you to develop this practice by taking up periodically questions from the previous years and demonstrating it as to how to think about it. But after that, you will have to carry it on. And while thinking about the questions, you will also have to think of contemporary examples. If you illustrate your answer with contemporary examples, that would immensely make the examiner happy and he will give you marks. Some of the theories of the sociologists that we are going to talk about are more than 100 years old. Say Karl Marx died in 1883. He died more than 100 years ago. So how is how are those ideas relevant in today's society? If you can relate that to contemporary society, that shows creative attitude on your part, a creative mindset on your part. And for that you will be rewarded. With contemporary examples, you can score up to 70% marks in an answer. That even in sociology, you can score the way people score in physics. Then, another important thing to do well in the exam is, as I said, that there are 19 questions you have to answer. So, Almost the entire syllabus has to be covered. 
because if earlier there used to be only eight questions to be answered so there was lot of choice you could be selective in preparing leave out some topics altogether now that is not possible you have to prepare at least 90% of the syllabus though for each part of the syllabus you don't need too much information you need only few points and one more aspect of the trend in the exam is that they ask you contemporary questions from the newspaper contemporary developments current affairs social current affairs social issues which have been in news so your newspaper reading in fact your entire general studies preparation would also be of great help in sociology if you are able to connect the current affairs reading with sociology syllabus and that is why i said that when you prepare thought frameworks think of contemporary examples relate that to the topic in the syllabus like there were questions a few years ago there was farmers movement the same year there were questions on farmers movement in the exam or there were questions on you know couple of years ago there was new education policy so there were questions in the exam on new education policy so when you read the newspaper identify the top, uh, developments in the newspaper which are connected with the syllabus and try to link that with the topics in the syllabus so your in social in gs also there is a paper on current social issues so preparation for that would be also a preparation for paper 2 of your sociology syllabus then you have to also prepare your notes it is not that you simply read the books underline it there and leave it at that you have to make your own notes i'll help you in preparing notes how you should do that but you have to prepare notes if you really are serious about the whole exercise that finally you should on the sociology the day before sociology exam you should have only two booklets notebooks on your study table one for paper 1 and the other for paper 2 all books should go in the cupboard so every topic you to prepare notes and you can start that maybe after 15 days of the commencement of the course because 15 days you would need to get familiar with the subject and to initiate your readings so after 15 days you should start making your notes you can show your sample notes to me in case you want any approval on that but otherwise notes making is absolutely essential and another aspect of your personality which is going to help you all throughout because the whole exam is actually an exam of personality for want of a better term i would say you should have the personality of a gentleman loafer why do i say loafer a loafer is a person who is carefree doesn't care too much for things i have seen very sincere students getting anxiety ridden 
before the exam and getting too tensed up and instead of thinking then they concentrate only on bugging up memorizing things they are sincere people they are hard working people but they mess up the whole preparation by getting anxiety -ridden. so you should avoid developing anxiety and i think two things if you do notes making and thought framework making then you will not develop anxiety so that is also a very important part of your personality which is going to influence your entire work now this is what i mean the general orientation you should have towards the exam then coming to the specific points what should you read for the for both the papers see the first paper in sociology it's called general sociology it is all theoretical you have various topics concerning the ideas of various sociological thinkers about the debate whether sociology is a science or a, is not a science how far is it a science things like that and then you have topics on various aspect of society the theoretical knowledge on various institutions like family marriage kinship and so on second paper is about indian society so what should be your readings one general principle is that do not read too much but make sure that whatever you read you understand and if you don't understand you can get back to me the next day bring the book from where you've been reading and you are finding problem of understanding i'll explain that to you in the class but understanding is absolutely essential so don't read too much now i have the syllabus copy in front of me i don't think you are carrying the syllabus because you have not yet decided whether sociology is to be selected as an optional but i may tell you topic wise that what are the source from where you have to read up one thing is there that if you are regular with the class if you are not absenting very often then your need for reading would also be reduced and once you understood things in the class lecture it will be easier to back it up with the reading i do want you to read a little because only class lecture may not suffice because there may not be continuities in what you write down in the class though there are some topics on which reading material is not available there i'll dictate everything in the class but otherwise it is better that you do some reading not too much of reading but some basic reading so in the first paper the first topic is sociology the discipline for this topic you have to rely on the study material that the institute will provide to you and along with that there is one book in fact that is the only difficult book in sociology paper 1 but i would still like that you do read it because you are taking the exam in 24 and there is enough and more time 
and I am going to be there with you long enough to clarify all your doubts. So, do read it up. You know, the reason why I am insisting that you read it, although I am acknowledging in the beginning itself that it is difficult reading, is that when you read that book, lot of questions will come to your mind. And then you can ask those questions in the class. And as I clarify those questions, you will gain total conceptual clarity about the subject. It is like, suppose I have to teach you how to swim quickly. So what do I do? I throw you into shallow waters. You, out, out of the instinct of survival, you try to move your hands and legs and learn swimming fast. The same is the case here. I am deliberately pushing you into a book which makes difficult reading. And I will tell you why it makes difficult reading. That it is not a textbook. The title of the book is Sociology, A Guide to Problems and Literature. So it is not a textbook. The book presumes that the reader already has some basic familiarity with the subject, which I know you do not have. But by reading that, you will raise a lot of questions. I hope you are not so weak hearted that you will run away just because you find the reading tough. So you have to read first 80 pages of this book. And perhaps if I remember correctly, those 80 pages would be given to you in the form of PDF by the institute. So you may not even have to go and buy that book because only first 80 pages are to be read. But that has to be read at least three times. By third time, you will have clear questions in your mind to ask. I am not saying understand the book. I am saying read it three times and identify your doubts. Then the second topic is sociology as a science. Here you to read the institute study material, the notes that the institute will provide you. And also there is a book called Themes and Perspectives in Sociology. Themes and Perspectives in Sociology by Harold Lombard and Holborn. H-A-R-A-L-A-M-B-O-S. Harrelambos. Harrelambos and Holborn. Now here I may clarify for you that there are two books of Harrelambos. One is orange colored, which is an old edition. It is by Harrelambos and Held. Harrelambos and Held. Do not buy that book. Do not read that book. That's an outdated book. There is a second book is Harrelambos and Holborn. Harrelambos and Holborn. That is a recent edition. It's a bigger book, bigger size book. That orange colored book is a small size book. So it is the second book you have to buy. Harrelambos and Holborn. And there is chapter 14 of this book that you have to read for topic 2 and topic 3. So there are two sources for topic 2 and 3 which you have to combine. The institute study material plus Harrelambos and Holborn. Chapter 14. So topic 2 is sociology as a science. 
Topic three is research methods in sociology. For both these topics, chapter fourteen and the institute material would suffice, along with the class lecture. Then you don't have to read from any other source. Then we come to the most important topic in paper one, which is the backbone of the entire paper. If you have done this thoroughly. 60% of the job is done for you in paper 1 this is sociological thinkers sociological thinkers for this you have to For this, first thing you have to do is to listen to the lecture very carefully. And here in the syllabus, there are only six thinkers mentioned. But in the classroom, I'll briefly also talk about many more thinkers which are not mentioned in the syllabus. But knowing them is important to understand what is mentioned in the syllabus. So, you should make sure that you don't miss the class on thinkers. Secondly, the institute study material would be given on five of the thinkers out of six. In addition to that, for the sixth thinker, that is Herbert Mead, George Herbert Mead, that is the sixth thinker, on which the study material by the institute will not be covering, which will not be covered by the study material, but it is covered by Haralumbus, chapter 15 of Haralumbus. And if you want to read more, that's optional. That's your choice. There is a book called Sociological Theory by George Ritzer. I am telling you very clearly, it is not mandatory. It is not necessary that you should read it. It is not mandatory reading. But if you, because you have time, we are in... 23 and the course will start from 12th of June 23 the exam would be in October 24 you have so much of time and if you feel interested so you can read this sociological theory by George Ritzer this is one of the simplest written books on thinkers now sociological theory talks about many thinkers when you get hold of the book, I'll mark the pages for you. You have to read only selectively from that book concerning the thinkers that are mentioned in the syllabus. But one topic is quite well given in George Ritzer, that is George Herbert Mead. George Herbert Mead is very well given in that book. That is why we have not added it in institute notes. So, if not for others, you can read that book only for George Herbert Mead. So, this is sociological thinker topic 4. This is the backbone because rest of the topics you will find that is only application of the ideas of these thinkers. So, if you understood this topic very well, you have almost 60% covered the first paper. Then we move on to topic number 5 in the syllabus that is called stratification and mobility. For that, you to read from Harold Ambos. 
you will find Herolombos is very helpful for the first paper. So, topic 5 has to be covered from Herolombos. Then, topic 6 is an easy topic, but slightly problematic because no sociology book covers this topic. For this topic, you will have to rely only on my class lecture. In the class lecture, I will give an elaborate dictation to you. So, if you are attending the class lecture, then you will not have a problem. Then, topic 7 in the first paper, the title is Politics and Society. So, you have to read it from Haralambos. Then, topic 8, Religion and Society. Religion and Society. Again, for this you have to read from Haralambos. So, you can see Haralambos is going to be a very useful book for first paper. Then, topic 9. Again, you have to read it from Haralambos. And even from Haralambos, you have to read only selectively. I will tell you the pages that you have to read from Haralambos. You do not have to read entire book. Then we have topic 10, where Haralambos fails us. This topic is not covered in Haralambos. So, for that, you will have institute notes and class lecture. Plus, For one topic in under topic 10, one unit under topic 10, that is development and dependency. For this topic, you have to Read from IGNU study material, Indira Gandhi National Open University MA course. So, you have to acquire the study material. There are few booklets, five, six booklets of the MA syllabus of the IGNU University. So, in those booklets, again, you have to read it selectively. I will tell you the chapters that you have to read from IGNU study material. So, this topic development and dependency is given in IGNU study material. It is not given in Haralampos. So, this is about the first paper. Your total reading, the institute study material, Haralambos and the first 80 pages of Baltimore. That first book which I told you, Sociology, A Guide to Problems and Literature, is by written by T. B. Baltimore. T. B. Baltimore. Now for second paper, you have to put in a little more of effort. Actually, second paper is going to be much easier to understand because it is about Indian society with which you have lot of familiarity already. But, unfortunately, we do not have a Haralambos like book for second paper, which covers most of the areas. So, for the second paper, you will have to do some basic reading. 
now they are simple but they are you know not like first paper where i am telling you only selective reading from aralum both chapters you have to read the entire books i think that would be good otherwise also for your essay paper because in the essay you may get essay on indian society a topic related to indian society and these readings will help you for writing your answers in the uh, you know essay paper plus by reading these books you will be able to think of more examples from indian society when you are writing your answer in the first paper so i would recommend that do read it particularly since you have time there is more than a year to go so you can afford to read it there is one background reading see as i told you that the second paper is about structure of indian society that means how indian society is made and how it is changing this is what the entire focus of the second paper syllabus is how indian society is constituted how it is made and how it is changing in what direction it is changing so before you understand how it is changing you should know how it is traditionally so there is a book called society in india society in india by david mendelbaum society in india by david mendelbaum m a n d e l b a u m mendelbaum it's a very simply written book but it is a little voluminous book now the day you decide that you are taking sociology as an optional you can buy that book and start reading it it's a simple book about indian society you don't have to take down notes you have to just read it to understand and in case there is anything you don't understand we can talk about it later on when we start the classes there is one small nuisance in this book that he makes reference to many names of the sociologists names of the sociologists ignore that don't try to note down bother about the names try to see what he is saying about india he'll tell you how indian villages how caste system is in india traditional india how family was in traditional india like that so it will make interesting reading you will discover your own society this is background reading then there is another book which is quite small in size that is changing india this book is written by robert stern s t e r n stern robert stern changing india read it slowly also to understand read the book cover to cover changing india and you should read it after reading mandelbaum you can take about 15 days to complete mandelbaum and after that 
another 10 days slowly read it few pages a day trying to understand only one problem with this book is that we don't have a very recent edition so data in the book are old data all right not very current data that i'll cover in the class the recent data but you will nevertheless get a clear picture about indian society then there is the third book india development and participation india development and participation it is written by amartya sen the nobel laureate economist amartya sen and another famous writer john rees you might have heard of him he is very active in india so he is from holland but lives in india and writes on india particularly contemporary issues like mg nregs and food security issue and things like that jean drich j e a n j e a n jean drich d r e z e so is it written by these two authors Amartya Sen and John Rees. So these three books are your background reading. If you read these books, ideally you should finish reading them by twelfth of June. after you have decided that you are taking sociology as an optional then you can straight away read mendelbaum and then read or if not by june you can read it by july these three books whatever you don't understand identify that note it down and you can discuss that with me in the class later on so this is background reading then topic specific reading now the paper 2 has been divided into three parts part a part b part c in part a there are two units in part b there are six units and in part c there are seven units so unit 1 of part a this is about different approaches to the study of indian society different approaches for this you to rely on the study material that institute will give and class lecture the study material that we will give you and the class lecture then you need to unit 2 of part a for that also the same study material that we give you and class lecture then we come to part b
पार्ट बी एज आई सेड हैज सिक्स यूनिट तो यूनिट वन ऑफ पार्ट बी फर्स्ट थिंग यू टू रिलाई ऑन इज क्लास लेक्चर वेर आई कवर इट एग्जॉस्टिवली देन यू टू रीड a chapter from igno ma study material then unit 2 unit 2 u2 it is called caste system so you to rely on one class lecture and the institute study material then unit 3 tribal communities in india class lecture institute study material plus some chapters from a book called tribal india by nadim hasnain selective chapters we that i let you know otherwise the book is not very well written book but in fact if you are regular with the class you can even skip that nadim hasnain because in the class i'll cover this topic in detail so you can rely only on the institute study material and class lecture then there is book edited by mn shrinivas cast its 20th century avatar it's a collection of essays so you to read one essay from this there is an essay written by panini that panini is essay you to read in fact there are some bookshops which give you the xerox version of those selective essays so they will be able to once the classes start i think they'll come and contact you and you may get only that panini's article rather than buying the whole book so that panini's article is also relevant for topic for social classes in india and in addition to that you to read igno material ma igno material for topic 4 the topic as i said is social classes in india then we have topic 5 unit 5 of part b it is called system of kinship in india for that class lecture plus igno study material and institute notes then unit 6 of part b
it is called religion and society in India. For this you rely only on class lecture and the study material of the issue. Then we come to part C. Part C, as I told you, I have seven units. Unit one, institute study material and class lecture. The topic is vision of social change in India. Then, unit 2, this is about changes in rural India. So, class lecture and institute study material. Then, unit 3. The title is Industrialization and Urbanization in India. Class lecture and IGNU material. And also Institute study material. Then unit 4, this is about politics and society in India. So, to rely on class lecture mainly plus the institute study material. Then, there is this topic, social movements in India. There is an IGNU booklet, I will try to arrange, that is actually not MA Sociology, that is a IGNU booklet of MA Political Science. But that covers the entire topic 5, unit 5 of part C, social movements in India. That booklet, it's a small booklet, I'll see if possible, I will have it arranged through the institute for you, a Xerox copy of that. So, that alone plus class lecture would more than suffice. Then, unit 6. Unit 6 is population dynamics in India. For this, besides class lecture, there is a book called Population Studies by two authors. Bhende and Kanitkar, Bhende, B-H-E-N-D-E, Bhende and Kanitkar. The problem with that book is, it's a very good book and also quite simple, but the data are old. They have not updated, they have not included the 2011 census data. They are still using 2001 census data. As such, we do not have 2021 census data so far. But at least 11 census data should be there. So, when we take it up in the class, we will 
add the 11 census data, but otherwise the topics you can read from that. You have to read it selectively. When you get hold of the book, I'll tell you which chapters are to be read. Then topic 7 or unit 7 of part C. Class lecture and institute study material. So this is about the syllabus, first and the second paper. Now in addition to this, as I said earlier also, that you have to carefully read the newspaper on social issues which will be useful for your general studies as well as sociology paper too. Because they do ask you questions on current social issues from India. And those social issues which you read on India, Indian society, they will also help you in paper 1 by way of giving you examples to cite. When you to cite examples by reading social issues, things related to caste, things now there are 2024 elections, how caste based mobilization is going to take place for elections and things like that or issues related to religion, issues related to you know regionalism in India. So things would be there in the newspapers and I think now Hindu is a good enough newspaper that you should read. And if you have more time, you can look up selectively Indian Express. So this is about your readings. Now, as far as our program here is concerned, we are starting on 12th of June. There would be classes held five days a week, two hours a day. And the timing for the classes five to seven in the evening. And this course will run for four and a half months. Saturday, Sunday, there will be no classes. Now, if you have any questions to ask, you can tell me. You are? Eight semester. Eight semester. Eight semester. Huh. See, if you are thinking of writing in twenty five, then you can join in a course in mid twenty four. All right, because you, as per your description, if you are attending the course in the university, I don't know whether you will have time available to study for UPSC at this stage. What you can do is you can keep reading the newspaper carefully, including social issues on the newspaper, and then join the formal guidance in 24. Hmm. Yes. Huh? Parliamentary committee recommended to... Yeah, this is all... See, I know only as much as you do. I have no official information on this. Now, parliamentary committee has said, I don't know whether government will have time to seriously consider it before 24 elections. And after that also, like even this change in optional which was there, that was, 
you know talked about since 2001 and finally it happened in 2013 so uh, we don't know what change when will happen and i don't think they are going to delete the optional because that issue has been settled by and large so it is just a comment of the parliamentary committee i don't know how seriously the government is going to consider that i cannot say anything with certainty because i have no access to and even the government it is only a recommendation you know there are so many committees and so many recommendations not everything is implemented yeah that is true if you do your optional now there will be an advantage if you spend some time on UPSC preparation because one point which I forgot to mention, I should mention now that when I said you have to prepare thought frameworks, that's only half the story. You have to also do writing. You have to write answers because what you finally are going to be evaluated for is what you did on those three hours in the examination hall. All right. So you have to learn how to manage time, manage words and write coherent answers. <clears throat> so you need to do a lot of writing practice. If you complete the syllabus well in advance and you have time, you can devote for writing practice. That is very crucial. Without writing practice, you will not score well. So whether you are taking the exam in 24 or 25, you should have enough time to do your writing practice. So if you are finishing it now, you can attend the test program and do the writing practice. That would be an advantage along with that you can prepare your general studies. In Guru Gram. See, that is your decision because there are so many things involved in it which you only can decide. There is the issue of expenditure because if you take a place on rent here, you will have to pay rent for that. Hostel may be cheap, this would be expensive. I don't know whether you, how you manage the two. You will save on time. Now, another is offline and online. Although online has some convenience, but it does not, it is not a substitute for offline. Because here you can ask me a question, I can elaborate on it, individually attend to each person's queries. Online, you are, it's one-way communication. Even if we do have Q&A session, but it is not the same thing as personally discussing your doubts in the class. So there is a lot of difference between online and offline. You should go for online only if you find that offline is not really possible for you. Otherwise, offline is always better than online. That's my belief. That is your choice. I don't know how good you are at law and how easily you can handle law. This point I made clear in the beginning that those who are taking the subject which they have pursued in their college, they are the best judge. I am not a judge on every optional, which optional to take. I only know about sociology and that too I have told you what all is needed to do well in sociology. Now the decision is yours. I can't dictate that you take this optional and you will make it. I am not like a mini Sai Baba here, giving a prescription for everyone. Hmm. Yes, please. Any other question?
Hmm. Yeah. They are not only for paper two. They will improve your performance in paper one also. They are background reading because generally a large number of candidates are from science background. All right, and their reading habits are very. Poor, if I can say that word, on social issues, they don't read on social issues. As such, even humanities student also don't read enough on social issues. So science student can be expected cannot be expected to read lot. So some familiarity with Indian society, so that you can write comfortably, easily on society in India, and cite examples in the first paper, and. It will also help you for your essay. So, I think those three books should be taken as a background reading. NCRT are kid stuff. It is for children. It is not good enough for the UPSC. You can start with NCRT to begin with, but. NCRT books are enough for GS prelims, but I don't think they are enough for socio optional. So this will have a synergic effect. You know, you understand synergy that the sum is more than the, when things are done together, their consequences are more than the sum of the parts. So these books will build a mindset in about Indian society, which will help you at many places, including interview. Hmm. Any other question? Yes. How to know you have interest in subject? Yeah, we are talking about sociology optional only. See, if do when you read in newspaper, do social issues appear interesting to you? Do you feel like reading about them? Or you read only about sports page and uh, cartoon strip and then headlines and forget about the newspaper? All right. So, if you do find interest in reading about family in India, marriage in India, caste in India, politics in India, these issues in the newspaper, that means it is interesting for you. You read Mandelbaum, you will know whether you find it interesting because that's a very simple book. It tells you about Indian society, different aspect of Indian society. Hmm. After the class, I we have a Q and A session online. I'll sit in front of the PC computer. And you will raise questions and I'll answer it there after the class. <clears throat> hmm. Yes, please. Any other question?
see you are asking a very vague question you are saying what level of knowledge base it cannot be described like temperature 98.4 degrees so so many degrees of knowledge base i have told you that you should have a general familiarity with indian society which you can acquire through newspaper plus two readings that can build the knowledge base i have told you that is enough if you do that along with that the readings on specific topics also which i have told you either class lecture or in shoot notes so that is all i can tell you there is no precise way of measuring knowledge base isn't it i have suggested these readings keeping in mind that majority of people are with non sociology background non humanities background for them this reading is important so that they get familiarized into social world otherwise you know only about it huh yeah this is more than enough i have told you already that uh, some books you have to read only selectively but the comprehensive reading is only of these three books for paper 2 for paper 1 heralambos is all that you have to read along with only those 80 pages of bottomore huh yeah blue one not the orange one that's all all right thank you